Hello from the land of TV. This is King Cool with episode three of, as Evil Tim called it, King Cool's Distracted Movie Reviews. Hope I can just whack the mic there. Um, this time I watched a movie called Event Horizon. Um, and, uh, in a way, after I sort of came to my senses after I put it on my cue, I was like, wait a minute, is this, uh, does this uh, classify as horror? You know, I said no horror, not because of any uh, objection to horror in itself, but just because I'm a chicken and I don't like blood that much. So I was like, well, I certainly hope I didn't just make an absolute ridiculous blunder, but it was already coming after uh, I sent uh, SpongeBob back, so I'm like, oh, oops. I'm like, whatever, I'm stuck with it now. Um, and, uh, I gotta say, like, I think we've all seen that episode of Family Guy where, um, uh, Brian, uh, not Brian, Chris, uh, basically, oh, son of a, uh, uh, Chris makes, uh, his boss rehire Meg because he wants to talk about her rent horizon, he talks about how cool it is. So, in a way, I'm sort of, like, really surprised how incredibly boring this movie was. I just was so bored by pretty much everything in it. Like, let me start, like, uh, one, well, you might not know, it's directed by the same guy who did, uh, all the Resident Evil movies, who was Paul W.S. Anderson, who, at the time, was just Paul Anderson. Yeah, one. Um, and he, uh, you know, is now Paul W.S. because he wouldn't want to get confused with Paul Thomas Anderson. Um, which I think is fair. No one would actually want to be confused with that guy. Um. How do I do this? Uh. Oh, check it out. Um. And, uh, it's, uh, I'm getting very much distracted here, but this is, just <laughs> this is another one of these games that probably is a bad idea to, uh, try to do this during, uh, but, um, so, like, we, when we start, uh, um, there's a big crawl that says all the things, the scientific advances that have happened to l bring you up to speed, allegedly, I guess. Um, and, uh, it says, like, two, uh, 2015, um, we go to, oh, jeez, we go to Mars or something, and it's like, I don't think any movie that starts with, like, a text scroll like that, and it wasn't a scroll, it was just a series of, of printouts or whatever. Check that out, ladies, perfect. That's what they all say. Um, and, uh, it's like, all this sort of stuff that it says, uh, of what, uh, um, I shouldn't have grabbed that block. Um, alright, so after a long cut, as I just completely lose the plot, um, uh, it's about a ship that was lost seven years ago called the Event Horizon that has been rediscovered. And you know this because this movie, along with the opening scroll, has the clumsiest exposition you could almost imagine. Uh, and uh, it's like, all of a sudden, you know, uh, since Sam Neill wasn't on the ship before, it's like, all right, I'm gonna go and announce the uh, seven people who work on this rather large uh, intergalactic space, not intergalactic, but this spaceship which, you know, we work on alone, and you'll see how we get picked off one by one as something evil happens. And, um... It's just, uh... Quite... Where's the robot? Um, you know, it's it's just tons of, of exposition. Um, because he's the new guy on the ship. It's like, hey, you know, we take care of each other here, or whatever. Um, uh, Lawrence Fishburne says. Um... I've often talked about, like, Star Son of a bitch! I've often talked about, uh, Star Trek being a show where, uh, it's basically the spaceship as a submarine, and when you get a missile hit, it's like, oh, and I've, I'm shaking because the ship, you know, moved, so we all had to move that way. Um, because of how, uh, you know, incredible- I don't think I can use this right now. Um, how incredibly forceful the impact was. I can use that, I think. Um, but, uh, oh, that was a, that was an object. But they go on the ship, and, uh, 
you know, strange things begin to happen. I can't use that either. Um, and um, let me look at my next page of notes. A lot of, of what they say is sort of... Uh, uh, well, there's tons and tons of foreshadowing. Um, let's see if I can do this right. Yes! That's how it's done, ladies. Um, you know, it's like they walk through the ship and it's like, Hey, what's that thing? Oh, that's the Deus Ex Machina that will come up later. It's like, alright, yeah. There's no way that the fact that you point this out apropos of nothing or the fact that someone has to ask about it, there's surely no way this is going to come up later, you know. Um, and, like, I got the sensation like I was watching a 3D movie that had been down, down put to 2D because, like, this must have been just when, like, animating 3D objects floating in space was just really just, you know, like... Majesty. I can't use that one. Um. Oh, how do I? There we go. Um. Because there's like globs of coolant floating around. I remember seeing it on a special effects show like a long time ago. Um, these shots of the computer animated coolant, and it's like, and then it, when it, someone walks into it, it always drifts toward the camera. Like pretty much, n no matter what, things drift. Son, damn it. Um. Stuff always drifts towards the camera. If someone is floating in space and they spit out a bunch of blood, then it's then they spit it exactly towards the camera. It's, it just feels like a 3D movie in in some strange way. Um, which I mean, I know he probably did, I don't think he's done a 3D movie uh, before Resident Evil 4, which was last year. Um, but um, you know, I get that. Oh no, I have I have one life left. Um, I think it's a movie, like, I've always sort of, I'm very dodgy about movies that are trying to be cool. Um, my big problem is, like, if something is trying to be cool, instead of just, just being cool. We can afford that. Um, because uh, there's one thing in the movie that is undeniably cool. Oh, s fucking sweet! Mystery spot. You guys don't know what this means, but, do do do, lots and lots of points. Let's see if I can get another one before the thing runs out. Um, I missed that. I'm gonna die. Ah, oh, I died. There goes all the points I just got. This just shows how good my luck is. Um, I don't remember where I was, but oh, it was, yeah, the coolest thing in the movie. That was it. Um, and that was, they're in microgravity for a while, because they're circling Neptune or whatever, and, uh, and they turn on gravity, there's a, damn it, there's a frozen corpse that was floating around, because there was no heat left in the ship, and, uh, um, and it falls to the ground and shatters into just a million pieces, Th oh, damn it. That is rad. That is undeniably rad. What was I standing? Let me just... Yeah. You get the hell out of my way. You cost me like three things of health. I don't think I can use that. Um. And one question I have for the movie, which... I can't use that right now. Um. Is, uh, why is a ship called the Event Horizon? The Event Horizon is a real thing. That was fun. You know, it's it's the place in a uh, black hole where if you get into it, you can no longer get out. Um, but why is a ship called that? Why is a ship called the Event Horizon when that's an actual space term? Like, you wouldn't call a, a naval ship the Tsunami. Like, that would just be confusing. It's just, I just don't get it. Um... Let me look at some more of my notes. Yeah, 38 minutes in, they finally mentioned a black hole, where it's like, oh, okay, finally, so there's something to do with black holes. Event Horizon wasn't just a name that sounded cool. Um, there's a couple of amusing moments where, um, actually, I think there's only one moment, let me be fair, where the soundtrack is in slow, like in slow motion. Uh, no, rather, the, the video is in slow motion, while the soundtrack 
as at regular speed. And it's like, well, that's sort of amusing. I'm hearing footsteps. I think I'm about to get interrupted, but we shall see. Um, um, should I put down the gun? I wrote down, sure, put down the gun, why don't you? Which is one of the few things I said aloud at the movie as someone put down the gun and then as I reached for it later, it had vanished, which I'm sure is a development none of you could have seen coming. Um, for the most part, I was just sort of bored with this movie because it talks about all these wild visions of, of things that are best left unseen or some stuff, and I'm like, well, yeah, you're just never showing us, and the only reason any of us might be scared is because the sound continues to make a bunch of noise, you know, which isn't as, certainly is not as bad when you're watching it in the middle of the day in a fully lit room, uh, you know, sitting four feet from the TV screen that's not even, that's not even a widescreen television, um, so maybe that's my fault. Um, sweet mystery spot. Um, and the climax, uh, the, oh, I can't tell the colors apart now. That's fun. Okay. Um, the climax is, is compl almost completely ruined by the canned stock sound effects of all the punches that are being thrown. It's like, in a way, I'm just like, you got, you got to you know, not use stock sound effects if you want to be taken seriously. Um, okay, that's better. Um, but it's, it's like those whack thwacks that you hear in, like, internet video. And I don't know if other people notice when sound effects are reused a lot. Like, did anyone see the prestige and you hear it? The only time they do it in the prestige is the cat meowing as it goes out into the field with the many, many top hats sitting out there, which anyone who's seen it knows what I'm talking about. Those cat sound effects have been in, like, every movie with cats. Like in that one episode of South Park where they're using the, the cats to get high, that's the same sound effect they're using for those cats. It's like, has anyone, does anyone hear this but me? I'm, I almost feel like I'm going crazy. So, at the end of the day, I can't recommend Event Horizon. It's just not very interesting, as, as much as I think it would like to be. It, I think maybe just the two movies I could compare it to as far as, even though these aren't R-rated movies are, damn it, I'm not even paying attention. Now I'm getting distracted by the movie review and doing bad in the game. Um, the uh, would be Sphere and uh, Star Trek Nemesis. I don't really recommend either of those movies because they're they're not good either. But they're not good in different ways than Event Horizon is not good. Um, oh yeah, the uh, I want to go back to the text at the beginning for I can't use that one. I want to go back to the text at the beginning for a moment because it starts out like 2015. Uh, we make it to Mars, and in 2040, the event horizon goes off and leaves. It's like, aside from the fact that it's redundant, because basically the characters go out and talk about this, as Sam Neill explains to the whole crew why they're out there, which why they don't know ahead of time is sort of baffling. But second off, it's not important that we got to Mars in 2015 and that other things happen. All that data is unnecessary to the climax of the movie. Why not just start with a shot of the ship going out? It's like, hey, we're out here because of this. You already explained it to us. Hang on. Oh, check it out. <laughs> That's what we call a bank shot. Um, you know, why don't you just let us see what is going on? Uh, let me, I know what I can do. Um, yeah. You know, the, the prologue, I'm getting very, very deeply tired of the, uh, of the, um, prologue, uh, for the, uh, um, for, uh, um, um, for science fiction movies or any sort of movie, which has to, we're going to explain a bunch of stuff because the movie's not going to bother explaining it, it's, you know, at any, at any length. Because we just don't have that sort of time for you, apparently. Oh! That was just baffling. Um... But yeah, it's it's thoroughly unnecessary. So as some people think this movie was cool, I didn't. You know, I just was was just bored by it. I wasn't even grossed out by it because all the horror stuff they don't even show for very long. So it's like I don't think this is gonna satisfy those looking for like real nasty stuff. So I don't know. That's pretty much all I have to say about it. I didn't really like it. It wasn't. 
terrible. It's not like it's anything hugely critically wrong with it. It's just this sort of... Now, how the heck do I get those? Oh, come on! Okay. One other thing I want to bring up before I go, and you'll see if, if this gets cut out, you'll know, because that will be the end of the video right there, is me losing. Um... Jeez. Oh, um... Is, uh... Both the discs I've, I've gotten from Netflix... Not both, rather. All three discs of, uh, that I've gotten from Netflix so far have had a skip in them. All three of them have at one point or another just gone bloop and, and uh-oh, I am having a problem. Which is funny because it's on three different uh, DVD players. The one on my computer, the one on my laptop, and the one on the downstairs computer. Not the downstairs computer, rather, the downstairs television, which is really old, so I don't really rely on that one. I actually could not get past a certain point in the movie. Um, I had to move on to a different player. Um, which didn't even skip when it got to that point, so I think it was that old player that was a problem, not the Netflix disc itself. Um, I was gonna mention it last time, but I was like, well, let me see if this third one skips, and this is the nature of, uh, of DVDs to skip. But I think I have gone on well over time. Let me see if there's anything I haven't brought up. At one point, someone uses the phrase, entirely unlikely, and it's like, that, to me, seems quite a, a, a strange turn of phrase is when some people say that something is somewhat unique, which I know drives some people crazy. But I think I've gone on long enough this time. There certainly will be a few cuts or something. So thank you for watching. This is King Cool. Drive home safe.